Hi, I'm John Persinos, Editorial Director of Investing Daily. Welcome to my weekly weed report for Tuesday, April 5. Well, it happened. The U.S. House of Representatives voted last Friday to legalize marijuana. The bill's fate is in doubt in the Senate. But the fact is, Democrats in the House, with some Republican support, managed to get landmark legalization legislation across the finish line. Let's examine what it means for the states and pot investors. Last Friday, the House voted to turn in 20 to 204 to decriminalize marijuana at the federal level. The Marijuana Opportunity Reinvestment and Expungement Act, a.k.a. more, is unlikely to secure the 60 votes needed to pass the 50-50 Senate, despite the strong backing of the majority leader, Senator Chuck Schumer, Democrat of New York. Schumer said last Friday, The time has come for comprehensive reform of federal cannabis laws. Of course, we will need Republicans to pass a legalization bill in the Senate, and we will be working hard to try and get them. Moore's passage last Friday has lit a fire under marijuana equities, as well as states that still haven't legalized marijuana. The states haven't waited for Congress. New state-level actions bring the total to 18 states, where high THC cannabis is legal for adult use, and 38 states where high THC cannabis is legal for medical use. Momentum is important in investing, and the cannabis industry currently has the wind at its back. The Moore Act would remove marijuana from the federal government's list of controlled substances, impose an 8% sales tax on cannabis products, allow certain convictions on cannabis charges to be expunged, and expedite criminal sentencing reviews at the federal and state levels. Moore also would make small business administration loans and services available to cannabis businesses. For Republicans, part of Moore's appeal is fiscal. By reducing law enforcement and incarceration costs and implementing new taxation, the bill would save the government hundreds of millions of dollars. The Congressional Budget Office estimated that the Moore Act would lower the federal deficit by nearly $3 billion over the next decade. The Moore Act was sponsored in the House by Judiciary Committee Chairman Gerald Nadler, Democrat of New York. Here's a tweet from Representative Nadler that's indicative of the bill's enthusiastic political support. A nearly identical version of the Moore Act passed in 2020, but it stalled in the Senate. House Majority Leader Steny Hoyer, Democrat of Maryland, asserted that the Moore Act is What the American people tell us they think is the appropriate thing to do, this bill is a matter of justice and equal opportunity. It's about addressing systemic inequities and reforming our criminal justice system so that Americans and America can become a better, stronger, more fair, and more just America. The sales tax provision in the bill that eventually passed in the House last Friday was hiked from an original 5% to 8%. Much of the revenue would go toward a community reinvestment grant program that provides services for individuals most adversely impacted by the war on drugs, including employment training, health education, mentoring, literacy programs, and substance abuse treatment programs. Supporters of Moore argue that it was time to stop viewing marijuana as a focal point of the culture wars. Legalizing pot creates jobs and investment profits for ordinary Americans. As the marijuana industry grows, it revitalizes communities and ancillary businesses by creating more jobs for citizens of varied educational levels and skill sets. The emergence of new legal markets encourages entrepreneurs and spawns new companies many of which go on to launch initial public offerings. Early investors in the marijuana boom are getting rich. Marijuana is becoming entrenched as a mainstream business. Marijuana also is permeating society among all demographic groups as increasing numbers of Americans tell pollsters they've tried it. Marijuana has evolved into a widely accepted consumer product. More might get stalled in the Senate again, But the House vote last Friday sent a clarion call to lawmakers at the federal and state levels that cannabis is a pariah no more. I've just described trends that are tailwinds for marijuana companies. The time to invest in pot stocks is now while the momentum builds. Are you looking for the best opportunities in the cannabis sector? Click the URL at the bottom of the article that accompanies this video on the Investing Daily website. 
Also, if you have any questions or comments, please send your emails to mailbag at investingdaily.com. That's it for today. Thanks for watching.